From the elusive nature of measurement to the probabilistic intricacies of Born's rule, the collapse of wave functions and the inherent randomness that shapes this universe, quantum mechanics continues to challenge and amaze us. In this video, we would cover some of the important concepts on the mathematical frontier of quantum mechanics. What is more important is that the inherent nature of quantum mechanics, the randomness, I would like to explain that mathematically. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to the 13th lesson in this series of videos on mathematics of quantum mechanics. First, we would like to look into the 12th lesson, a quick recap for those who have missed the earlier lesson because this is something very important and we build the foundation based on the earlier lesson. Now, we have seen uh, to be very precise that the state of individual quantum systems are basically described by something which is called complex Hilbert spaces. We have seen that quantum states are basically the collection of all relevant physical information, for example, position, momentum, spin, polarization, and this is so. So typically in a classical system, it is all a well-defined reality. The state value evolves under the equations of motion. We can use equations containing the force of gravity to predict the trajectory of a cannonball, just as has been depicted in this illustration. Compared to that, when we get a quantum system and we get complex numbers like A plus Bi, so we find out that quantized means limited by uncertainty relations and it can only provide a probability distribution. It can only predict the probability distribution of electron count that crosses or accounts for that particular detector. So this is the famous double slit experiment. I think this is self-explanatory and this does not need further explanation. Further, what we have seen is that quantum supervision being a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics, that which means that a particle can be at two places at once. Compared to, uh, to the contrary, classical mechanics is something which is well defined. The nature is guided by the deterministic mode and the outcome is either zero or one, which is not in case of a quantum state. This is typically the bra and cat notation of quantum state, which tells that it should be zero and one. If you're really curious about how bra and cats occur, then you can go to my playlist on quantum mechanics. I've divided it into three parts, the basic, the medium and the advanced level where I have explained in details how the bra and cat operation takes place. If I compare to that of classical state, obviously it should be 0 or 1. So this is a famous depiction of the Schrodinger's cat example which shows that the si cat is simultaneously alive and dead. Now, if you are really wondering that this power of superposition has been used in quantum computers, well, I have defined it in my earlier video, lesson number 12, or you can go to the exclusive video, which is called quantum computing. And what is com quantum computers is there in my playlist. It actually shows exploiting the power of quantum superposition in order to make quantum computers work really very fast. So we got also qubit which is basically quantum bits. Uh, it can exist exclusively in quantum zero or quantum one state. Qubit behaves along with the uh, laws of quantum mechanics and qubit has two different exclusive states. So here the marked one zero and one. So this is quantum zero and quantum one. We have also seen, and from here we will now start our uh, next lesson, is that the energy level, that is the highest electron level, uh, which is depicted in this video. So you see this electron has the lowest energy level, that is the shell, and it is denoted by the ground state 1 or 0. And this one on the top is the highest electron level, which is the excited state, which is 0 and 1. So if we define the state vectors as plus and minus, then we get something like this. So quantum superposition is a principle which states that zero can also be in state and one then quantum mechanics allows the system to be in an arbitrary state. We have seen that this one, this psi is actually a superposition of zero and one and these are what we call are the probability amplitudes. We have also seen that the state uh, zero and superposition of this uh, bra and ket plus and minus yields to this. 
so till now the, we have seen that and now we will start with our new lesson that is how can we make a quantum measurement now remember that uh, one of the postulates of quantum mechanics tells this the probability of measuring a system is given is in a given state is given by a modulus squared uh, uh, to, uh, by the inner product of the output state and the current state of the system which is called the bonds rule we will look into that immediately after the measurement the wave function collapses into that state now the question is that yeah so this is the one now the question is that do you or do we actually perform a measurement to see the system is in this or in this or will you measure this or this so the question is now is that what will I measure which one and what is the probability and here comes what is called the Born's rule uh, named after the famous German British mathematician Max Born and he won the Nobel Prize in physics for his fundamental research in quantum mechanics as especially in statistical interpretation of the wave function so now when we raise this question which one and what is the probability we use the Born's rule and what is that coming into the next part of our video so we got a, a quantum state for example psi and we have got an orthonormal basis which spans from phi 1 to phi 2 to up to phi n then what we do is that when we measure that this psi with respect to this orthonormal basis uh, uh, what we are asking actually is that we are asking that the quantum state which one of the states is it in which one is it in this state or in that state so the probability of measuring the state this one that is denoted by p phi i is actually given by this now this is actually when we find out the probability by squaring it and we find the probability of measuring the state but this is still incomplete until and unless we come to something we have measured it but remember the postulate also tells that the wave function collapses so now it is the time that we should understand wave function collapse although intuitively we do understand I would like to explain in very simple mathematical comes coming up into this part of the video so after the measurement that means we are measuring the original state collapse uh, we are actually left with this one so from here what we try to understand is that from a mathematical point of view the bonds rule and the wave function collapse together measures what is called is the quantum measurement so we got the squaring of the amplitude that is a bonds rule then we got the wave function collapse into particular state and together we take what is called a quantum measurement now if you have noticed till now the video very closely you will see that all of this have been performed but the question is that how a quantum measurement is being performed coming up into the next part of our video this we have already uh, covered but still I would like to show you this very important the lowest electron shell that is the ground state and this is the highest energy state which occupies the excited state so if you define the vectors as this one then what we get is this this is already being uh, covered so from here what we do is that if we define these two vectors then we get something like this and something like this so this one this bra and cat plus minus is actually telling the linear combination of the computational basis that is a quantum set 0 and quantum state 1 the question arises that does that mean the quantum system is both in 0 and 1 absolutely you are right yes it is in the quantum state both 0 and 1 and this is typically what is called a quantum superposition this is weird this is bizarre but that is how quantum mechanics is that is this that the linear combination of computational bases are both in 0 and in 1 and this is known as quantum superposition what is quantum superposition with an example let us define mathematically coming up into the next part of our video so suppose that we have this one and the measurement is done in the orthonormal basis then the zero with a probability of this and one has got a probability of this so it is just like the flipping of a coin so what we can say is that if we take the basis of the measurement so for example this this one plus and minus then the outcome of this one with the probability of one and this one with the probability of zero so I hope this I can make this uh, absolutely clear so if we have those two states phi, psi 
which is taking 1 and 0 or 0 and 1 plus or minus we get the probability of 1 of 1 of and it is 0 and 1. But again if you uh, have observed the video closely then you see that these are all very specific values 0, 1 etc. But quantum physics or quantum system does not behave so precisely. So the question comes is that can we define or can we measure those quantum system and generalize them coming up into the next part of our video. So let us uh, treat a very general case of a qubit of an unknown system which is something this and if we measure the quantum uh, computational basis it will yield into this I am taking A for A in order to make it general and this one 1 with the probability which will be B squared. Now what will happen again if we measure the uh, just as earlier we have done with plus and minus. So we get something like this obviously plus minus i will be 1 over square root of 2 1 plus minus and the matrices will show an a and b and upon further computation we see that this is coming to a plus minus b square root of 2. What does that mean? That means that the outcome will be in a probabilistic outcome which will be this. So it actually implies that the outcome of the state will be a uh, Brian cat plus minus will be the probabilistic outcome of the modulus of a plus minus b square whole divided by 2. So this is what is called quantum measurement and with 0 and 1 and with other probabilities how the quantum state varies. Now here is something very important uh, conclusion as well I would say a very important observation. Now you see that uh, when we measure the different bases, for example, plus minus is to plus minus b square, 0 is to a square, 1 p is to b square. So what I have stated here is that this psi is actually is an arbitrary state and we can conclude that if we measure an unknown quantum state, that is the psi, it will always yield to a random result. And that is why on the right hand side I have written quantum mechanics is inherently random because taken different kind of basis it yields to different kind of probabilities. So for an unknown quantum superposition, if you get an unknown quantum superposition which we have seen A and B or something like that, it is impossible to predict precisely which the outcome will be and that is why it says that quantum mechanics is inherently random and we can only predict the probability of the outcome given that the superposition is something which is random which is uh, very arbitrary we can only predict the probability of the outcome and that proves the basic inherent nature of quantum mechanics. That is all for today's video. It was short and crisp but thank you for watching. I tried to explain the basic inherent nature of quantum mechanics through Brown's rule and what is a wave function collapse. If you have liked the video please hit on the subscribe button and you can contact me for, uh, in this email ID and I have also got a channel which is exclusive to general relativity. If you wish you can go ahead and subscribe. You can further follow me on my Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and on my Twitter channel. Thank you very much for watching this video. Physics for Students will be back with a lot of good news coming up, which is cons I'm considering this to be a surprise, but I will release soon. But this series of quantum mechanics will still go on. We have a lot of things still to cover. Till then, goodbye.